to cast a line, knowing I'd get a bite. <laughs> it just, it can give it, but it can't take it. So, ah, no, it wait till no. I see him, I'm going to be going. Oh, 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 you're not, you're losing another semi, boys. Oh, my God. Need Viagra for that. All right, hold on. Oh, we've just gone live on Facebook with that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Eagles Chat on Thursday. Thursday, the 19th of May. It has been a traumatic day for everybody concerned with Sheffield Eagles. My my partner in crime is here with me from the from the Eagles Eagles chat central of his van, Mr. Mark Webster. Good evening, fella. Good evening, Dino. How are, how are you? Well, it's, well what a day it's been. Oh, well, quite what the a day. day. Quite the day. Um, quite the day. Toby's, yes. Uh, Toby's uh, very simply said, Poor old Sheffield. He said it in that statement and the star, didn't he? We go, we're going to go straight to it. Uh, he said, if it had been different, if it had been the football club, if it had been a football club, this would have been completely different. But because it's little old Sheffield Eagles, it doesn't matter. Not a truer word spoken. Absolutely. Well, it's the same old story, isn't it? Um, we're always getting the second hand with this lot, and it's starting to get very, very, you know, boring now, isn't it? I mean, Can we just make it perfectly clear to people who's watching it? Please, please, please don't go at the office staff. Please no. don't. It's not their fault, this. This is nothing to do with the office or Tash, Mark, Mark H, Mark Aston, anyone to do with that, that office. This is all on a safety and a safety group that's doing it for the safety and Scarborough. Because Scarborough came out with that statement, insert the star. I'll read it because I've still got it saved. It's I'll in the read... public domain now, so we can read it out, can't we? Yeah, it was on the it's on the star. It was on the star, so we can read it all right. This came from Stephen Marriott, the operations director at Scarborough Group International. Evening, Andrew. I hope you're well. He says it is a legal requirement of the safety advisory group that the stadium operates under restricted capacity of 800 supporters until we have received our official safety certification. This is to ensure that our safety processes and procedures are, specific, are significantly robust and allow us time to review and where necessary, we final update in the advance of full opening. Unfortunately, the certificate cannot be granted until the stadium has reached practical completion in June. Now, that tells me that they've known about this. This is what I can read from that. That they've known that the stadium's not going to be ready for May 23rd. It looks that way. Um, I don't want to play devil's advocate here, but I've got to look at this objectively. For those who don't know, I work in security. So I know a little bit about fire regs and safety regs. Fire regs are difficult and challenging and very complicated, especially since Grenfell Tower. Um, the rules in place in public areas and for public premises for the fire for fire regulations are strict. Now, I'm not saying this is a reason why this has happened. I agree with Dino here that um, someone's known about this and not said anything up until now, which is extraordinarily disappointing, if true. Um, there was a test event at the weekend. Does anybody out there know how many people were present? Because if it was more than 800, and it could very well have been more than 800 because it yeah. were a football event and there were some known faces there, why that and not this? Yeah. Now, we've, we've been pitching this game now for many weeks. The guys in the office have been doing this, pushing, pushing, pushing sales. By all accounts, ticket sales were going extraordinarily well. Obviously, witness fans are going to want to come as well. There's loads of people coming from other Tasha places. Says, Tasha has just said yeah. it was under 400. It was under 400. Thanks, okay, Tasha. Well, it's, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. You know, it's pushing. And I think a lot of people were going to come on the day and pay on the day because a lot of people do. Yeah. You know, we've got a lot of walk up fans. I know I know several people that were planning to come and pay on the day and now we're worried that they can't get because, you know, there may not be tickets available. Mm -hmm. I, I sincerely hope that we've put them off sale just so we can confirm how many we've got, how many we're allowed, and then back on sale again. And then let's get as many as we can because ultimately, even though it is only 800, let's get the 800 there because it benefits us as a club. So, absolutely, you are absolutely on the nose, Dino. You know, this is not the fault of the club. Tash, both marks. They are going to be pulling their air out. Them who've got some of it left are going to be pulling their air out. 
over this because it's it, you think we're frustrated they're going to have it triple so yeah, yeah. Can we just said can i just said to tash congratulations on your weight loss i've just seen your picture today oh yeah. my god what a weight loss girl that is an amazing well done tash that's phenomenal oh, weight loss girl I, I, I have not seen said post yet but i will applaud that's yeah. um, you know it's it's one of the yeah. hardest things in life to do um yep. and it takes a lot of a lot of effort and a lot of things so yeah you know any anybody that never criticize and never make fun of anybody who wants to improve themselves yeah. my so missus well has done. lost my yeah. missus has lost a stone and a half in a week and a half because she's getting mm. ready for this because she's gonna wear so she's got she's lost nine stone nine stone oh my god nine stone <laughs> That's the weight of Rob Warren, see, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I think he weighs more than nine stone. <laughs> He's, a big fella. He's a big fella, and I don't yeah. think there's much fat on him, yeah. so I don't think Rob, right. I think Rob weighs more than that. Yeah. Um, Congratulations yeah, so, to Andrew. He's done so, two and a yeah. half stone. We're turning into Weight Watchers tonight. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> yeah! Um, but getting back to this thing, the statement yeah. that was put out, the star that the, the star put it out today, you cannot, I mean, it's like we just said, somebody somewhere knew this. Mm. Why? Four, five days before the event, five days before Sheffield Eagles homecoming, that they announced that they did this to the Eagles. What frustrates me the most is that this, is, this could potentially put off people coming for the next game and the next game because they say June... June's got 30 days in it. We've got two yeah. games at home in June. Three. I think we've, it's got, two. We've, we've got York. York, York Lee, and what's the other? Bradford. Well, Lee's going to want to bring a load. Bradford's going to want to bring a load. Are you seriously telling me yeah. that we might have to take those games on the road to compensate for the away fans? Yeah. yeah We're not Tash, doing that one. We're yeah, not doing Tash, that. Tash has just said, it's, we're full to capacity already. It's heartbreaking because we actually believe the way it was going, we could have tripled them. Yeah, absolutely. We could have done it. I know what I mean. Oh, it, it just it's just so frustrating, isn't it? It's just we were so close. We were just so close to having an event that was like nothing happened. And then pow, this drops and everybody lost their minds. I mean, the people that were swearing on this page last night, you were a disgrace. Sorry. But if you were the ones that were swearing, then sorry. But that's despicable. Do not swear on this page ever. That is bang. That's bang out of order. There's kids it, on this thing. It doesn't achieve anything, and it just winds people up. So you know, we, we all get frustrated. Oh, believe me, yeah. I've been frustrated with Eagles games. Don't worry. But on a public forum, we need to we need to watch it, especially now with the you know with the thought police watching like they do. Um, but let's all be let's all be sensible and rational about this. Right. Um, the people that's there on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. The people that's going to be there Monday night. Right. We've got to do it as everything. This flag will be there no matter what. I know this flag will be there no matter what. We need the 800 people in that thing. There's going to be 100 witness fans. They're already kicking off because I've seen the page. I've seen their page today. And one of them said, oh, you're having a laugh. And I put underneath it, it is nothing to do with Sheffield Eagles this. You need to stop. You need to wind your chins in, whatever it is you've got. I said, then listen to the fact that it's nothing to do with the Eagles. We wanted it full capacity. It's nothing to do with us. And he went, well, who is it to do with then? I said, read the reports that's coming out. Oh, and I sent him the link. And what do you know? That that comment was deleted. He just done it again. As you can imagine, Tasha said it. As you can imagine, everyone in this heart is so heartbroken and worked their backsides off all this week. It's not just this week. It's just for the past. How many setbacks have we how had now? Have we been, how many months have we been waiting for this? How many set, we set, we, right. I said to Katie last night, we were told February. Then February turned into April because of uh, weather conditions and everything. And then April, April uh, was already said, no, we haven't got it because they blamed, they did the weather again. <laughs> fine. That, oh, hello. <laughs> they did fine um, with the weather I'm and everything. The wheel. I'm not yep. driving, by the way. I'm parked, so don't <laughs> shout at me. But the phone's on the steering wheel. It's the only balance I've got in this thing. So it's, it's a Citroen, so there's no flat surface. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, but they said, like, April, Good Friday, and then all of a sudden, no, we can't do it. We need it. We need six weeks to complete. That's what does me. They said publicly in end of March, in March, they need the extra six weeks to complete the stadium, and then five days before the event, they say no, it's not completed. It must got to be partial completed. 
Why wait till now to announce this? Somebody I'm somewhere. A, am I right in thinking that when we first moved into Don Valley in 91, that wasn't quite fully finished? No, there was no, there was yeah. no, there was no turnstiles. You literally yeah. had porter cabins at the front, and I remember because I was one of them. You literally had to go and get your ticket from a porter cabin that was outside, and they were in between the entrances. And you went there, and there was one guy, one guy stood there on the entrance to the stadium that would take your ticket, and you went in. There was no turnstiles at Don Valley to the end of night, to the middle of night after two, just before the World Student Games in '91. When we well, moved in in 1990, it wasn't complete. There was it was not completed then. So we've got it, a similar, not on the same scale, but we've got a similar situation yeah. now. And yeah. as horrible as it sounds, mate, we're just going to have to rough it. We're just going to have to rough it. I'm not, I'm not promoting this behaviour. But if you really want to go, stand on hill. It's public ground. They can't move you on. And send club a tenner. Pay the club a tenner and go and stand on hill and watch game. Now, I'm not promoting that behaviour. And, you know, I was up in Scarborough, funnily enough, where is it there, a couple of Mondays back for their playoff final. And there were, must have been 100 people stood on hill over at ground watching game. So yeah. if you really want to if you really want to do that, obviously, I know it's on telly for those who are that bothered. But if you can't make it, send the club, you know, I'm sure the club would appreciate the money anyway. Um, and go and stand in public ground and watch it. They can't legally yeah. stop you. Um, I think it's, 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 it's heartbreaking. There's no two words about it. I mean, I, don't, I, can't, I can't imagine what Tash, Mark, Mark H, the whole players, the staff, everybody is going through. Because it's just been, finally, we've got this ground. Finally, we've got this match. Finally, we've got, oh, excuse me. Finally, we've got everything coming. And then, bang, five days, five days before. That's what gets me. All pre-match entertainment is outside the ground anyway. Oh, we can go, I've got a carnival atmosphere outside the ground. All we, can, really. all we can do, for those of us that are fortunate to be going, I never thought I'd see an Eagles game sell out, just as a slight comic relief, but um, what, I, what I'll say is, get yourselves down there early, let's get us money over the bar, let's spend as much as we can to make up for those who should have been spending the money, who couldn't, who now can't. You know, everything's going on outside the ground. That shows you that they're just not ready for this, are they? They've, no. they've, sold, they've sold us on a promise of a game, you know, being ready for me. And it's not ready, is it? Let's be honest, no. it's not ready. No. And who's fault that? It's not ours. But what can we, the thing is, what can we do about it? What can we do about it, apart from sit here and get angry? We've, yeah. just got to, we've just got to take it on the chin, as horrible as it is. We've got to move on. We've got to, firstly, importantly, we've got to win the game. We've got to win the game. Yeah. And then we work on from there. Yeah. It will wind up. It will wind up Lee immensely not having their fans there. It will wind up Lee fans immensely, and that's something I always enjoy happening. So we we've got to try and make some goodness or some advantage out of this situation until it's it sorted. Is a now, when they, when they say phase one, what does phase one mean? Mm. The stands and because the capacity for then is like what thirteen hundred. I mean that yeah. should do as normally, but. 1300 what 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 when's that going to be june yeah. and then when's the 3900 going to be if it ever is i've just thought of a positive Are you ready for this now this is me being crazy positive person that i am if this means that we can get 800 sheffield eagles fans in that stadium against lee and we don't have one lee fan and how bad will that pee off derek bormont there is a silver lining to this that I if we can I, get 800 uh, per ticket sold for the matches and just said to them, look, we can't give you any fans. There's no away fans allowed. Oh, my God. How much would that pay off Derek Bormer? Immensely, and I'd enjoy it, but I think there's an RFL rule <laughs> that you have to give some fans to the away. You know, I mean, I'll give what, 50. I think, I think you've got to give some. I don't know if it's a percentage or what. Yeah. I know in football it's a percentage, but I'm sure we've got to give away fans something, yeah. even if it's not 10%. much. 10% of 800, 80 tickets. Give him that. That'll do. Yeah. The, the RLFL would kick off. Oh, dear. How sad. What a shame, Andrew. My feelings at this moment with the RFL. Oh, dear. How sad. What a shame. Dear God. Talking of the RFL, Joel's on a charge. Grade D punching charge. Mm hmm. Hmm. I don't condone violence, as you know, but the referee didn't control that game attorney in any way, shape, or form. He let it all boil up. He let it bubble over, and then somebody went in on somebody went in on Isaac. Isaac got himself binned, and then of course Joel got involved because it was Isaac, and of course he's going to stick up for him. Yeah, so exactly. you know, what, these things happen because the game's not controlled, and yeah. that referee—I don't know—I don't know who we were, 
But uh, he was clearly out of his depth with a game like that. There's always some beef wheels and facts. He needed a strong <laughs> official and we didn't get it, did we? Yeah. I'm just glad Brad weren't playing. Brad knows. <laughs> He was there because he was running water on it. We're good to see him yeah. running around. But, um, but yeah, that would have been the kind of game that Brad would have enjoyed, let's yeah. say. Yeah. But it's, uh, be... but it's like, I mean, we said we're next week, we only get one first match. We only get one first game. And it, it, it's, it's for you guys that have done it for the last nine years, for you guys that have gone here there everywhere in this in this country i don't care if it's just yorkshire lancashire don't care you guys have followed the eagles everywhere i mean we've already had this week we've had ebbs fleet that looks easier to get to for me i'll then... get to that i'll get to that for those who <laughs> it, it's, it might be a bit confusing for folks so i'll get to that in a bit dino i've, right. I've researched okay. it yeah as, I you have. Know, as you know being being autistic i research everything in detail so when you're ready <laughs> i'll tell you all about right. it <laughs> but um so for all the people that's done it the last nine years, next Monday means everything. It's the Eagles, we're back. Everything's in Sheffield. Yeah, it's 800. There's only going to be 700 Sheffield Eagles fans there. But um, it's, 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 well, Brad just said it's bad enough for the fans, but let's just think how bad it is for the club. Let's do what we've always done, stick together and stand and fight. And like Mark has always done, come on, Eagles, we can get through this. Excuse me, one moment. Excuse me, one moment. Come with you. What a statement. What a statement. Going to put it better myself. That's I'll read it in a bit. I can't, I can't see the comments. Because I'm doing yeah. this on my phone, I can't see the comments when they come up. <laughs> but, um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I absolutely agree. And what a, what a comment. You know, this is the time the club need us when we have this. Once again, we find ourselves in a situation of adversity. Through yeah. no fault of our own. We fought against it before. We'll fight it against it again. Yeah, definitely. Who has that phrase? So we is it Hunslet? So we shall again. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. 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 I, like that, no. yeah. Yeah. I think everybody in rugby league will be laughing their heads off at us again as usual. But guess what? We've had worse days. We've had worse. And um, I'm just I'm positive the 700 Eagles fans gonna be there. There should have been more. We could have had a couple of thousand. We really could have had a couple of thousand there on that Monday night. I just and urge that's those people. Yeah, I just urge those people who can't, who for reasons of no fault of anyone's, can't be there on Monday. Yeah. Don't give up. You know, we want you. We want to see you. And club, if anyone's listening, you know, I know it was a tenor in this time. Let's try and keep. Obviously, don't cut his noses off or whatever. But let's try and keep it fair. Get people in. Half season tickets maybe for the rest of, for the last five six home games when we're on a run. Make a deal for the last five six home games for a tenner a piece if you buy it all in advance. Let's yeah. get some deals. Let's get the people in yeah. because it's not just the people in; it's what they spend when they're here and how much they enjoy themselves. And if yeah. we're on a good run of form, which I think we will be, um, that's what encourages people to keep coming. The weather's good, you know. Let's stand outside, have a drink. Don't give up on us, you know. It's not our fault. Don't give up. We want we want you. Yeah, we mean. I think Monday is going to be a celebration anyway. It it's, it's hurts the fact that there's not going to be people, but people can still come down and go around the atmosphere and things like that, or badger a local pub and just say, "If you got Premier Sports, and do that, and then we can just make it as much as we can. Go to extra time, extra time extra place, time, and we'll have it on. Extra, extra time, time in the town. Yeah, yeah, our sponsors, and uh, I can. Yeah. They don't pay me to say this, but I have been in quite a few times and it is an outstanding venue. If, it, oh, if, it's, cool. live, if it's live sport, have you been in? Yeah, we've been Dino for yeah. the end of the season. Yeah. The downstairs bit especially is brilliant with the new mural and the photos and the pictures and everything. Get If you can get to extra time, I wholly recommend the place. They've got good beers on tap, my favourite cider on tap. They've got a million televisions. You know, we, 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 we wholeheartedly appreciate our sponsor and promote yeah. their and promote their venue, let's say. Yeah, I might go down after the match. I might just go on because I'm in the town centre anyway because my hotel's in the middle of the Haymarket anyway, so yeah, I can yeah. still remember where Haymarket is. Uh, but uh, I, I, I think I might just pop down after the match. I mean, everybody's it's going to be up a bit at nine if I go down there about ten. I can have an hour, an hour or something in the building. More than welcome, anybody wants to join me. We can seven have a right laugh. It's seven o'clock kickoff, Dean. I thought it was 7.45. Just... 
Is it? 7.45? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think it's seven off, <laughs> off seven, weren't it? It just depends on what time it is on Premier Sports, isn't it, really? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. no, I, I think it's, uh, there's going to be a wonderful thing. 7.45 kickoff. we've just been told right, by Andrew. Yeah, 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 no 7.45. Problem. Yeah, no problem. I'll be straight yeah. down from work to see what all the fun's about. I'll, well, be, I'll, I'll, be, uh, I'll be straight there. I mean, I get, well, my timetable's filling up by the minute. I'm getting to Sheffield at half past two on the train. Uh, walk. I'm going to walk from there to the uh, hotel because then I'll take me to three o'clock so I can sign in. Get in, get a shower, get changed, get me flag, get everything I can. Boom, boom, boom. Then go down to the stadium about four o'clock, four, ten past four, and then just be hanging around outside the stadium from about four and just sample all the atmosphere as much as I can and just do it that way. Because it's like I said, it's only going to be one first game. And I remember my first one at Don Valley Stadium was funny because I had this permed mullet. And my girlfriend at the time, she came down. And she, it was her first game as the Eagles. She'd never been to one before. So her first game was the Eagles. So she came down and said that. And then next minute, Look North interviewed all these fans. And they interviewed me. And I forgot about my hair. And then the next night on Look North, you see, and I've looked like Huggy Bear from Starsky and Notch. I just got this big Afro perm on top of my head. And I went, oh, my God. And my girlfriend laughed her head off. She was going... I've only been at first game and I get put on the telly and I went, yeah, look at Afro, man. <laughs> look at Afro, man. Look at that. And I just went, and everyone in the office from that moment, I went, all right, I Shirley. Bet, I bet, bet Lock North don't come down on Monday. <sighs> well, why not? They should be. They should do, but I bet they don't. They should do. All the, all the local things they should be doing. There is live singers, face painter with the Eagle logo stamp and competitive inflatables. Oh, oh I'm always good to inflatable. Could be a laugh. Contenders ready. Uh, well, if, they, if, if they've got if they've got gladiators jewel, do you know me and you are having a rumble, mate? No, no chance. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be hilarious. If they've got the if they've got the old jewel there, boom, come on, come on there. Uh, uh, you just see safety uh, people having a birthday with that one, can't you? <laughs> uh, sounds about kind of fun. Um, uh, but um, anyway, London. We said this on, on the Monday night when we had the mark on and well, Toby or Mark, whatever it is. And even if the look on his face when we said, hey, they've just changed venue. And even he didn't know, did it? He? he just went, what? Yeah. Oh, crumbs. Oh, and he okay. didn't know. He just went, uh, what? And it was just it's, absolutely. Um, aren't London obliged to consult us before changing the venue? I know we always do it with away teams yeah. because well, I think he'd been, he'd been out on a golf course all day, though, hadn't he? So. Yeah, but, uh, and he's got a yeah. phone. Phone him. <laughs> but so, uh, Ebsfleet, it's easier for me. Now, I can't believe this is easier for me to get to Ebsfleet than it would have been to AFC Wimbledon. It's easier for all of us, Dino, because yeah. I'll tell you how you get there. To get to Wimbledon, you have to get a tube to the South Bank, Waterloo, I think it is, or Victoria. I think it's Waterloo. And then you've got to get a train from Waterloo to Earlsfield, which takes about 20 minutes. And then you've got to walk from Earlsfield to Plough Lane, which takes about another 20 minutes. Yeah. All in all, from North London, from the terminus, it's about an hour, if not a bit more. Ebbsfleet, I'll tell you how you get there. The high-speed service, uh, southeastern, I think it runs to Rygate, I think it is. It leaves St Pancras and it gets to Ebbsfleet International in 18 minutes. And the ground is, ten, is five minutes walk from there. It's actually what's, easier. It's uh, actually easier than Wimbledon. Can I just ask, what's the date for this good match? It's uh, Sunday the 3rd of July. <laughs> Thank God for that. Then I thought it was following week because I'm up in Sheffield. I'm doing my charity event week after. Yeah, oh, you are. You're missing my birthday for, hey. aren't you? Um, yeah. Is it? Hey, is it a home match on 9th of July? 8th, Friday night. 7th, because 8th is a Saturday. Night, 8th is a Saturday. No, oh, no. 8th. No, no. Friday the night. Is the Sunday. The 10th is the Sunday. I should yeah. know. And then the ninth, nine. and then the eighth is the Friday. And I think uh, I haven't got the fixture list on me, but I've got a good memory. It's the I think it's Batley at home. Oh, it's I'm on coming. Night. I'm coming because I've got to come up Friday night anyway and get everything sorted for the next day. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll come. I'm I'm going to come up for that one anyway. Yes, by, getting. And by then, what's that? Uh, I'm getting. Got... Uh, by then, we should have all this nonsense with the ground sorted because that's yeah. June and this is July. Yeah. He says, uh, Michael White has just said, as bad as it could have been, it could have been worse, could have had no fans allowed at all. And as much as I feel for the unfortunate fans who can't go, 
It's down to 700 fans that are fortunate enough to be there to show the lads in the club how much they mean to us. Cheers, Michael. Thank you very much for that. Absolutely. Um, I think it's, I mean, talking like this is just, it's, there was a lot of frustrations yesterday and there was a lot of frustrations today. I've got to admit, when I first saw that club statement yesterday, I went, oh, no, 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 no. It's not the it's not that there's a stadium, are they? And I just went, what? And boom, it just went from there. Last night, Mark Hannigan came on and you could see it was, it'd be, it looked like they've had no sleep at all for the last few days. Yeah. I don't know how the office have been operating. Uh, but to see everyone that's like that and everyone's heartbroken and everything like that, and I know people are wondering because, well, I ain't got my ticket and all this. Yeah, sorry, but it's it's hard, it's heartbreaking as, well, as much as it is. But it's just like it would have been more heartbreaking if we'd have had, if we'd have sold, if people there'd been more tickets sold, like there were 1,200 tickets being sold something like that, then that would have been even worse. But... Um, I don't know what we'd have done, mate. I don't know what we'd have done because there'd no. have been a lot of irate people. Yeah, I think... Mate, I mean, I know I might take, I might take some flight for this, but Scarborough have really got to go... The Scarborough group have really got to, like... They've got to accept responsibility for this. They really, well, yeah. really have. Well, yeah, who else is it going to be? I mean, when, when whenever you're doing a building project, regulations are... Again, I'm getting on my horse here. Building regulations at the time are approved before the build begins. You can't. We Scarborough Group would have known, based on capacity and build, what rules and regs they would have need to have met and followed for it to open before the build started. That's yeah. how building works. Um, so to drop this now, it reeks of two things: incompetence and a total lack of planning. Yeah, and Andrew Morris has just said it's called the McCabe effect. Well, let's not go into that because uh, <laughs> I'm not doing that, but Scarborough Group could have done this a lot better. They could have done this a lot better than done this five days before the event and um, let Sheffield Eagles know literally about a few days before the start of the event. Um, if they, if I just hope that she, I hope that Toby and everybody concerned with the club and everything like that um, – Get some actual compensation for this because last, the look look at less look, lack of earnings they're going to get because of all the things that are, if there would have been two thousand people there on Monday night at the stadium, how much revenue would that would have generated the club through food, drink, everything else, merchandise, and the whole thing? A, a great deal more than it would for eight hundred. Not to disrespect Thank you. the people that are going, but a lot more. Yeah. Hmm. So it's just an absolute. It just yeah. Okay, I put I put my head on the chopping block for this. But somebody somewhere, I would love it if Stephen Marriott or anybody from the Scarborough would like to come on this show and explain to us why this has happened. But I've got a feeling they'll hide behind the statements and that's it. They've done this since day one of the stadium anyway. No, I've been asking for them to come on and explain why the stadium's been delayed for years. And I've never, ever, ever had a reply of anyone. And then I put a statement out, I think it was Monday, saying, where's the badge on the side of the stadium? And somebody underneath said, well, there's not going to be a badge. And then Mark Hannigan, yes, they said, yes, there will be a badge or something that says Sheffield Eagles on the side of the stadium. We'll put someone up as sense. We'll, we'll, have, we'll get Senior to make, or one of the Rooney twins, we'll get one yeah. of them to make a flag and we'll stick it on the side of the bloody thing ourselves. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Morris says, as harsh as this sounds, they won't, as they say, it was safety and SAG that have made the decision, not Scarborough. Well, that's all well and good, but why now and why not ages ago? Why not ages ago if you've known all about this? That's the problem. We've no problem they, with health they, and safety. Yeah. Health and safety is health and safety. We get it. We understand it's got to be right. But why now and not a while back when it could have been dealt yeah. with? Was there, any, was there any incidents or something? Did somebody fall down and break their ankle on the grass verge at the, at the stadium on Sunday or something? Well, it's it, it just, there's just something that I think something's happened there. That's caused all of a sudden this because there was no there was no inkling this was going to happen before Sunday, was there? Something's yeah. happened at that event, surely. That's caused the club, all this. The club, the club wouldn't have pushed it as hard as we were pushing it if we knew that we weren't going to be able to do it in the way we thought. Yeah. We've literally yeah. just had this dropped on us, for want of a better term. This is like this is worse than in 89, sitting at the sitting in the office, and all of a sudden. There was a phone call coming, and uh, Gary took it, and me, Dowell, and Mark were in there, 
and we're all watching and all of a sudden his face fell and he put the phone down and he went, we've just lost all at the stadium. They've closed it. And we went, why? And he says, we've now got to find a home for the next, for the whole season because Olin Stadium has been shut due to the Hillsman disaster. And that was two days after the first game of the first season. Luckily, the next three was away, but the next home match and everything like that, after October, I think it was witness, we didn't have a home. So Mark Gary just said, so like, like, right, we're just going to find somewhere. We're just going to get anywhere that can take us. And that's when we went all the way around it in 89. And that was the, that was the nomad season. Yeah. yeah, that was the nomad season, yeah. Yeah, and that's when we stayed up because we uh, we didn't get relegated because we came back from 20 nil against Salford and we drew. And it was that point that kept us up. Mm. So uh, I remember that season. It's, it, 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 somebody's, put, somebody's put that DVD, that, sorry, that video on a... I think it's Andrew Senior that's put that on. He's put that season on uh, YouTube. Um, his, his, his YouTube handle is Red and Gold Wizards. So yeah, Red and Gold Wizards, yeah. Will and Senior. Also, he's very interested in putting more classic games on. So if any of you have any old VHS, uh, Betamax, or any other media method, you know, Senior will very much have them in order to get them on there. We're not trying to break copyright. We're just trying to celebrate the history of the club. Yeah. I don't put my video tape in because <laughs> I've got two. I've got two. I've got the Sheffield Eagles witness, which is already put on anyway. Yeah. I've said that like me with Bross haircut. Oh, it's embarrassing. How many uh, haircuts have you had? Well, let's put it this way. When you get when you get mishandled by Jeff Hardy and all the other lads at the uh, Eagles, and they got and you set up a, a this is the I've got, I've got a funny story. Um, I went in to get my haircut once and it was Bogarts in Hillsborough. The famous oh, Bogarts in Hillsborough. It's, it's still there, yep. yep. And I went in, and it had just opened. And I went in with my Sheffield Eagles jersey. And he says, oh, I says, yeah, can I just have an haircut, please? I just want it to get trimmed off. And I went, yeah, no problem. And then the manager came up and said, are you involved with Sheffield Eagles? And I says, yes, I am. He says, right, could you do me a favour? We want to offer the first team squad a free haircut. And he gave me this card, and I went, yep, no problem. Took it to the office. Gave it Warren Smiles and Dowell went, what do you mean free haircut? I said, well, there's a place in Hillsborough that's want to give Eagles a free haircut. All of a sudden on the Saturday, we was doing this promotion in Sheffield at the Peace Gardens where people promoting the game against St. Helens. We finished it at two o'clock and all of a sudden everybody went, right, let's go to Bogarts. And they'd organised it. Half past two, there were seven Eagles players went in. Mark went in there for a free haircut and I don't think he's ever paid for one since. Because he's always been, every time I've known him, he's always gone to Bogarts for the haircut and always been, and always that, that was one of the things I always remember. It's like, oh yeah, we'll give you free haircuts. And I don't think Bogarts realised that about all these years later that Tubbs might still be going in and having his hair done. But uh, it's honest, Bogarts in Hillsborough was really, really funny. And uh, everybody was going in there and uh, getting the free haircuts. Jeff Hardy, Paul Broadbent, everybody was just going in there when they wanted him. A free haircut? Yeah, can we got some tickets? Yeah, 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 yeah some tickets. Boom. Brilliant. Fantastic days. But uh, my, uh, my style went from a mullet and then I now went to have it. And Jeff Hardy grabbed me and he said, you can't show up in Eagles games with that haircut. And I went, why? So I've been growing this saying, he said, no, 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 no. We're first division. We can't look like... Then he gave me this models about having a short hair. So I went, right, okay. So then he got me in the chair and he shoved me in it and my shoulders were down and I'm going, oh, get off me, will we? And he goes, no, I'm making sure you stay here. And then he went, Clip him, and this woman went <laughs> and went zoom all the way at the back and gave me a bros echo. And I went, Oh, what have you done? And they went, Ah, you'll be all right for a couple of months. And that's when you see on the <laughs> Eagles game, and that's when you see on the Eagles that I've got short hair and it's all come back and it looks like a brosette. So please watch that game, you'll notice me. I'm the one with the bag and the chef Eagle ski jacket on in October. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know why. I don't know why. I was young, I was stupid. I was 20. Oh, yeah. I was 20. It's, it's, it was hilarious. But, um, I mean, this week has been... I never thought all this would happen when we're doing the week of Eagles chat. I never thought... I said, oh, yeah, we'll do a week. It'll be all right. No no big deals, no dramas. We just have people talking about what it means to be the Eagles. And then, boom, yesterday. Oh, my God. You couldn't have hit a bit of bombshell if you tried. Oh dear, but um, I must admit it was nice to see Mark when he said about this this show and he says you guys have been amazing with this and it, that really meant a lot. 
and uh, having the Heritage Project on and Richard on Tuesday as well. And it's just amazing. It's just fantastic because we just wanted people just to get involved with the Eagles. We nearly hit 900 members on the group. Have you seen it? I think we need one more. Excellent. What, the, one, uh, the, support, the uh, Facebook Supporters Club group? Yeah, we need one more one more person and there can be 900 members of the club 900 members of the page which would be amazing and the amount of people I've turned down this week that come from Halifax and Hull it's as if they're going to get away with it oh you're, you're a mod yeah oh, yeah I'm, a, I'm an admin oh, right. yeah. okay. otherwise this would never happen this would never happen uh, but uh, anyway we're late about people to get let people chill out tonight and say that's it let this gentleman get home and do all these things he needs to do um, oh, oh no, I'm I'm going off to play touch rugby in a minute. Oh, that right. he's going to play touch in rugby. About, well, in about half an hour it starts. Right. Oh, oh, half I'm an hour. In, this right. is why this is why I'm here. I'm in the van. I'm yeah. just driving through it. I'm going to do the show, <laughs> and I'm going to go and play. Then I'm going to go home with someone else. I'm knackered. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then Harry tomorrow, decided, Harry decided half past five would be a good time to get up. So that with that, uh, then I've <laughs> worked and then I've been to the gym. Now I'm doing this. Then I'm playing rugby, and then I'm going to actually find some time to sleep. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think I think that's the same thing with the with the office at the moment in it because they must yeah. be running around yeah. trying to think is there any ways we can get through this. Uh, tomorrow night with wine have gone up, I think. Yeah, but um, yeah. no, London, third uh, of July. Definitely yeah. looking forward to that. Um, I'll definitely see if I can. I mean, it's easy for me because it's like Huntingdon, London, and then I go from King's Cross across the road to St Pancreas, St Pancreas to Ebbsfleet International. Who calls the station in Fleet International? What? Right. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why. Because it's one of the terminal, not terminal, sorry. It's one of the stops for the Eurostar as it goes to Paris. There's oh, right. Frankfurt, Ebb's Fleet, Ashford, and then it goes under the tunnel to Paris or whatever, right. Calais or whatever. So it's actually a place where people can park and get on the Eurostar or drive the cars onto it. So that's right. why it's international, because it's just it's outside London on the M25. So it's, it's like where they've built a Eurostar platform. So... Um, that's why the train is quick from St Pancras to there because it uses the same train line or track that the Eurostar uses. But the Eurostar's not stopping there at the minute because they don't want to. So yeah. um, southeastern trains are going. The train you want, I, uh, oh, I don't know the times, but it stops at it stops at Stratford International and then stops at uh, Ebbsfleet, and it takes 18 minutes from St Pancras, which is quick it's very quick considering yeah. how far you're going yeah. so it's actually better this is actually better than going to wimbledon you know in all honesty for anybody yeah. especially anybody who's traveling down on the day and going home because of course getting from wimbledon back to king's cross for your train home will take you a bit of time and you have to get stuff straight after game but with this trains from ebb's fleet back to st pancras about i think there's three or four an hour in it's 18 minutes there's no there's no big push and rush to, to mm. get home so if you're going down for the day, I mean, I'm down for weekend any road, but if you're going down for a day, this is actually better. It gives you some more yeah. time. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going down because literally, like I said, it gets me there and then it's like a 10-minute walk from the station to the ground. So it's perfect. Yeah, it's it's perfect. perfect. It's you come out of, you come out of Ash, uh, Ebbsfleet, uh, out the car park, round an island, on, and it's there. Yeah. I think... Uh, came out, I, I looked straight away where it were because they've got a football team there and that's what they all do. All the away fans all go to, go to Ebbsfleet from central London. Yeah. Um, could I just say congratulations to Mark as well because the Brisbane Broncos won this morning. Again, again. Hey, that's seven, that's seven out of eleven, mate. The tide has turned. I'm not saying we're gonna win it. I'm not saying we're gonna we're gonna finish in the top five, but this is encouraging. This is encouraging. Hold on, let I'm me see the table at the moment. Signing. Right. Signing. Yeah, the, yeah, the South must be pulling the hair out of that. Yeah, Brisbane are fourth. Can you believe it? The fourth Brisbane Broncos. Uh, Penrith at top. Never, you say that like it's never happened before. We have a wonderful six, history of success. Yeah. Did so, you see it? I mean, I know we're going off subject. Did you see the Canterbury Bulldogs where, where Phil Gould walked off the walked onto the pitch and told the coach to get off the pitch? He's taking the training session now. And the. Yeah. And the, yeah, a few weeks ago, the director of football, Phil Gould, decided to walk onto the training park and just slagged off every player saying how rubbish they were, told right. the coach to get to the sidelines. He's taking over training. And then on this week, Bulldogs, uh, res the coach resigned or he was asked to be, it was going to be sacked or resigned. And, oh, Phil, and, yeah. and Phil Gould's going, well, it's got nothing to do with me. I've done nothing wrong. Shut up. 
You were the cause of it. He's always done it. Every club he's been at, Phil Gould, he's done this exactly the same. They've been in, Bulldogs have been in dire straits for years, so yeah, yeah. it's not, it's not, but, not, uh, not really. But uh, yeah, top four, it's Penrith at 18, and then Melbourne with 16, then Cowboys well, and think- Cowboys and you with 14. So well, uh, Panther, Panthers beat Melbourne last week, and they get him a right good hiding. So it was an annihilation, mate. I watched it. You don't see the storm, but you don't see Melbourne beating up like that very often. They well, Melbourne have been talking rubbish about the Panthers all week. They were been saying all these comments and what they was going to do to them, and mm. Panthers just went, just keep saying it, pal. We've got ammunition here. As soon as they went on that pitch, Penrith just boom, and they didn't let up. I mean. But every don't slag off your position when you're going to play him four days later. Don't do it, but they've done it anyway. Um, but uh, fixtures this weekend before we do, because you know, we, we're doing that. Fixtures uh, tomorrow uh, in the Super League, we've got Huddersfield versus Toulouse. Toulouse, I'll we're take Toulouse we're for that. Toulouse, aren't we? We're all Toulouse, aren't we? Uh, relegation decider, Leeds Rhinos versus Wakefield. Oof, they are... Uh, and then, got, and well, then I don't got, know. Leeds were pretty bad against Salford last week, and Wakefield came unstuck in France. So yeah. I don't think Leeds are going to be dead or going down, to be honest. But they, they, they do need to find out what's wrong and stop the bleeding quickly. Yeah, uh, you've got Salford, Castleford. Uh, don't care and, about either of them. Uh, and then in NRL, West Tigers versus Bulldogs, and Parramatta versus Manly. And then you've got the Ladies Super League as well. Uh, Saturday, oh. Uh, 21st on the Saturday you've got in the championship Featherson versus Whitehaven at half past five and Bradford yeah. versus Newcastle at six o'clock well yeah. Featherston Whitehaven that's going to be ugly um, oh, Newcastle Brad, Bradford Newcastle could be interesting because Newcastle are improving and Bradford yeah. don't seem to be doing anything really they just sort of no. sat there mm. could be interesting Good chance, uh, good chance for Newcastle to really put the mark down on where they're intending to go. Yeah, League One, we've got Swinton Cornwall. Well, Cornwall. <laughs> oh. um. I can't believe it. I still can't believe it. <laughs> you just can't what? say anything. What, what happened? <sighs> what a perform. Can't take anything from West Wales Raiders. They performed no, at this game. No, no, they were they amazing. Uh, Rochdale, sure, you know, if you stand in front of a dartboard and throw enough darts, eventually one's going to hit the bullseye, yeah. isn't it? Correct, yeah. yeah. Uh, Rochdale, Doncaster, Rochdale, it's gone Doncaster. Yeah, yeah, going it be. Well, Don- Doncaster are very weird at the minute. They yeah. um, they won at Scholars, but you know, everybody is. But they- they've still got injuries. They've- they're still short of form. Rochdale yeah. will probably have them, to be honest. Yeah. Which, again, and then you've got Raiders versus Hunslet. So. Yeah, Hunslet easy, I think. Yeah. They're going all right, Hunslet. On uh, Super League, you've got all KR versus the Catalans at half past 12. Mm. And then you've got all FC versus Wigan at three o'clock. Well, that's going to be tasty. Yeah. And then on Sunday, Batley versus London. Batley, yeah, man, fancy, ba- Batley. You would be fancy in Batley, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. After losing 52 0, they've got to be a reaction. There's got to be a reaction to that. I mean, I didn't see that, but it did surprise me. Not so much that Lee won, but the distance of it was yeah. quite surprising, especially how they were against us. Mm. And Batley have been pretty solid so far. Yeah. And Adrian Lamb had afterwards still complained about the slope at Batley. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, can't do all about it. No. You can't do all about it, can you? And he wins 52 <laughs> nil and complains about the pitch. What? Some folk. Some folk. Yeah. Uh, Jewsbury v Barrow. Ah, uh, Barrow in three four since they've lost their couple of yeah, their players. Three four and Jewsbury are just rubbish, so that could be anything to be honest. Yeah, uh, this is the one that's going to be interesting. Lee versus Workington. Why is that going to be interesting? Well, uh, what, what what Lee's going to show? I mean, is it going to be the Lee that we we took close to the edge, or is it going to be the Lee that turned up and won fifty two nil? What what is it going to be? Yeah, I, I think if you look at the Lee are going to win that game very easily. I mean. The reason they didn't do so well against us is because we got our tactics right and frustrated them. Less teams with less ability will struggle even more, yeah. you know. So I don't really think it matters which Lee turn up in that game. I mean, you know, they've got Workington have got fullback of the year, so you know it could frankly be anything. That score could be all, you know. 
Beverly hey, have right? both got easy wins. What? Yeah. Is it in fact Phoenix, uh, QLT's lad? He's at Batley now. I know he's but he's been gone. He's gone from one place. He's gone from one place to another. Well, he went somewhere. He went to Rochdale, didn't he? Yeah, and I think he's gone in Championship now. I think he's. Uh, I think it's either Featherstone or somewhere he's, he's gone when he's playing now. I'm not well, sure he where. He shouldn't have gone to Fev because they're not going to game there. He needs no. to go somewhere that he's going to he's going to he's going to do well. Yeah. Um, yeah, find out because I don't know where he's gone actually. I thought he, yeah. I, know, I thought he'd gone into Champ One. Well, yeah, I'll find out. I think he's in. Ball. I think he's in Championship now. I think they've gone with another one. Uh, Keithley versus Hurricanes. Don't put a bet on that because, especially if you're a Hurricanes, but if you're a Hurricanes coach, <laughs> he's been suspended you'd, till you'd July. Be back, you'd be backing Keithley in that. They're, they're seven for yeah. seven so far, so you'd be back. Uh, tasty one, York versus Halifax at York. Very tasty. That's going to be good because now we're going to see our because we've got two teams banging form there. Facts we know because they beat us up last week a bit. Uh, York have been very good, especially at home. You know that's going to be very, very juicy. Yeah, and uh, we and then on Monday night it's as it's the big, big return, and it's not just the Eagles that's returning. It's some of our old lads that are coming back, some of the older witness players that are ex Eagles. So let's I'll give them a nice warm welcome after the game. Don't don't give them the big things before. We need them to uh, play after <laughs> afterwards, and we can Aaron have a Brown, chat. With. I think Aaron Brown's still injured. Yeah. Um, I think Ollie Davies will be playing. Uh, Fossey will obviously play because he's a class yeah. act. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, well, let's let's be nice to him after the game. And yep. uh, you know, I'm sure this will be important for them as well because they did play at that ground for us. Yeah, they did. And uh, I hope that uh, they like they went. I thought that when they when they left to the other clubs, went oh, got rid of all oh, artificial pitch. Oh no, witness have got one, have they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, could you see him going? Oh, I thought we got rid of the grass. Oh no, we've got witness ground. Uh, but no, I think today uh, there's been a lot of a lot of frustrations and the statement that came out. I mean, we're going back to it to finish off. There's nothing. There's no point, Sheffield Eagles. There's no point anybody on the page having a go at Eagles. This is completely no. out of the spectrum of Sheffield Eagles. This this has got nothing to do with us. We've tried as best. We're just two fans. I know people keep thinking we're affiliated with Eagles. We're just two fans. No, I like chatting about yeah. the Eagles. We're both fans. That's all we are. No, we just importantly, this. no, the club don't tell us what we can and can't say. We don't back the club. We only are here to promote it and try and be yeah. our honest. But we are not told what to do and what not to do by them. We are independent of them. They apparently like what we do. So and that's we'll, one, that's the way we're going to keep it. We, we don't get told what to say and what not to say. I mean, if, yeah. if, if there is any subject where they say, please don't talk about it, we'll respect that. But yeah. no, we're not, we're not in their pockets. They're not in our pockets. We're, we're purely fans here. Yeah. And when anybody comes on the show, it's the graces of goodness. And it's thank, mm-hmm. thank you very much to everybody that does that, to everybody that's been on. I mean, in the two years that we've had Zoom, it's been this, this thing has just gone crazy through the roof. We've had so, so many people on. It's been amazing at side of what it used to be. And I, I can't thank everybody's enough for the thanks for everything, what they've done for this as well. Uh, right, I'm going to let you get off and warm up and get your touch rugby. And uh, tomorrow night, we will People have... <laughs> yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow night, we have got Mr. Dan Fowler, the media mogul of Sheffield Eagles himself, the person that did that wonderful video last weekend and everything. And he's going to come on and talk about his past nine years' experiences and everything to do with the club. So please join us for the last one of the weekly Eagles chat. It's been a big week. It's been a massive one to me. There's everything to talk about the Eagles for the whole week. It's been fantastic so far. We've just got one more left and we've had a guest on every single night and it's been wonderful so far. And I can't speak out enough of everybody. Thank you so much. And I will let this gentleman now because he's going to go and play rugby. And I'm not jealous one bit. I'm not not, not jealous one bit. (laughs) Well, if you're ever up here, you're welcome to join us. Oh, mate, I'm 53. I mean, I think um, the only time I'll play rugby is Masters. I think I'll well, do the please, Masters thing. Steve Pierce plays for us, and I think he's, well, it'll kill me if I get this wrong, but I think he's mid 50s, so don't worry about <laughs> we, we do not, uh, I'm hardly a spring chicken, mate, but you know, no. all ages abilities are welcome. All right. Well, anyway, take uh, care, guys. Everybody, remember, please, 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 it's. Be respectful on the page. We need that. We need people on the same thing and pattern at the moment. There's too many people, frustrations. Yes, tensions are high. Tempers are high and everything. But please, 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 just remember, 
these kids might be watching this and stuff like that. And if I don't want to delete things, I really don't. But if they have to, we have to. But uh, take care, everyone. Thanks to this gentleman again, as usual. It's only that side or that side. Well. I don't know which side. You're that side to me, but you're probably that side to everybody yeah, else. Yeah, I'm that side. And that, that. <laughs> but anyway, thanks to everybody for tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow night for the last of the week of Eagles chat. Good night. God bless. Guys, take care. And we'll see you. And if you're not here tomorrow night, we'll see you Monday at the stadium. All right, yeah. take care, guys. Good night. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, mate. Bye-bye.